Hello and welcome to this video where I'll be sharing a walk that I did around Breverdale in the Lake District. Abandoned farmhouse. I started near the hamlet of Roundthwaite in the Loon Valley and soon made my way over to Breverdale itself. After walking up the valley, I reached Red Crag and then followed the ridge back via Winash and Jeffrey's Mount. First thing in the morning and someone is ready to go. I was keen to do this walk because I'd heard Breverdale was an interesting valley with lots of abandoned farmhouses and things like that to see. And I was hoping to get a panoramic view of the Loon Valley from Jeffrey's Mount. The weather on the drive up was pretty atrocious, but I kept going and tried to trust in the weather forecast, which said that most of the day would be dry. So, let's get going. So, it's the start of the walk, and we've got an interesting view over the motorway, which thankfully we will soon be leaving behind. So I'm just starting off today with a short bit of road walking into a round fight and after after that we will just be going I think around this little hill in front of us and then turning left into Breverdale which is where, where I'll be walking for most of today. Very slippery wood on this bridge. So I think that's a T-Bay. Hello. Hello, horsey. Hello. You're pretty, aren't you? So after that little jaunt across the fields, um, we're going down this little slope and across that bridge to join that road. And then we'll carry on on the road for uh, about a kilometre and a half uh, before we turn off onto another footpath. Again, this, uh, this wood is extremely slippery. Just looking back in the direction that I've come from, so I've come from those, past those little farmhouses down there, um, this hill, I think, is Jeffrey's Mound, uh, which is where I'll be coming down at the end of today. So the weather, the weather has suddenly really picked up, which is lovely. So hopefully it'll stay like this for a bit. So I'm going to drive up here. It was quite grim, so I'm glad that I'm glad that the forecast wasn't completely wrong. And now turning off the road again and onto a footpath. The road does carry on down down into the valley and then, and then across and I'll be meeting the same road further on. Um, it's always nice it's always nice to uh, go on the footpath through fields. And so the footpath just goes past this farm now and then onwards down there. There goes a, a training jet. Thank 
think it might be a hook. Peace and quiet slowly returns. So I'm just heading down from a couple of farms back towards the road for for a little way. At the, fir the first farm back there, I came across a um, well, quite a happy, quite a happy looking collie actually, considering the circumstances, with a big rubber ring round his neck. He'd uh, unfortunately had to have an operation on his uh, abdomen. So I had a little, a little chat to the owner as well, who came out, came out to see, and uh, we're talking about my my collie as well, who's now five months and uh, growing, growing up, getting bigger, getting, learning new things. And I mentioned, mentioned training, which of course has been a little difficult with the lockdown and whatnot, because lots of the classes have been cancelled with lockdown. So anyway, we're, this is sort of, this road now is heading up Breverdale. Um, and it's a very nice, very nice little valley. People variation on this walk comes down through this field and uh, through that gate. Um, although it's not very, uh, not a very friendly sign from uh, from here. So yeah, so there's a acknowledged right of way to the livestock on the common, but apparently you have to call to use it. So I don't know. Anyway, on the on the map it's it's not a footpath or anything on the map. It's funny there are a lot of uh, private signs all around here. So I don't know if that means that they've had big problems with trespassers in the past or if there's just a particularly tetchy landowner around here. At least they are actually right, but there is no right of way through those gates, unlike uh, unlike some other landowners who put signs up like that, even when there is a footpath across their land. Another abandoned barn over there, and a very steep road. And there are lots of pheasants about. There's another, there's another abandoned, abandoned farmhouse over there. So yes, the information board. Was, uh, was telling the truth when it said there were lots of ab abandoned, abandoned buildings here. Yeah, this is a really, really pleasant bit next to the river. This would be a very nice picnic spot in the summer. So according to the map, it's been a, uh, a byway this whole time and continues to be a byway. But uh, apparently at this point, it's no longer suitable for motor vehicles. But to be fair, they might have put it there because there was a good turning around spot. So I've not seen this kind of information board before, but I suppose if you were thinking of driving up here for some reason, then it might be helpful. Maximum width, 1.4 meters. So 
So I've come along the track a short way and we can just about see up from there where Brest High is and uh, hopefully we'll be walking along the top there later and I'll be heading this way now towards that ruin of a building. And on the right we've got two more ruined buildings and what looks like a barn that's still in, in use, well quite a modern, quite a new barn. Still got some roof on it. Looks like it has been used as some storage for hay. So I'm going to be heading up in that direction, but um, there is a, a footpath that goes that way. And look at that bridge! Isn't that a fantastic bridge? I think I'm going to have to go across that. So anyway, this is now technically a bridleway that I'm on and I will just be heading up up Riverdale for a couple of kilometres um, till I get to, uh, well it's called Red Crag and, and then I'll be turning kind of left to come back along, along the ridge. So I've just come up this short little rise and there's another lovely secluded little spot with more uh, abandoned buildings over there and, and down there as well. So I'm, fo I'm following this uh, vague, vague bridle way along the valley and it's quite boggy under and a foot in places. So have to have to watch where you put your feet. I think we're sort of coming to the end of Breverdale now really um, and at some point this bridle way is going to uh, peel off to the left so I'll just have to keep an eye out on the map so I've just stopped to have a little look back down the valley it's very very nice and that's a very sort of nice looking hill over there I think it's called a Fawny Bank and there's clearly some tree planting around here and you guessed it another abandoned building you might not be able to hear it but i can hear the uh, quarry the, the shap quarry in the distance over there and occasionally some traffic from the a6 as well but anyway onwards <laughs> Thank you. 
So I've pretty much lost uh, any trace of a track coming up there, but I think I've sort of found <laughs> found it again. And this is the uh, the way up to Red Crag. Um, but before I go up there, I'm just going to have a, a quick wander over there to see if I'll get a, a nice view down the valley. I've been tramping over this moss for a, a little while um, toward Red Crag. Uh, I think I've lost the, uh, the bridle way, if, uh, if there is much of a bridle way to follow. Um, but anyway, it's quite, it's quite nice going really, nice and soft underfoot with really interesting flora around. Um, but yeah, the mound on the uh, left that you can see is Crookdale Crag. I'll be going up there after Red Crag. And then behind us, that's the view down to Riverdale now. Right, according to the map, I just crossed over the bridle way, although I didn't see anything, so that explains why I couldn't follow it earlier. But I can see a little white pole up there, and there's another pole down there, um, and they're probably supposed to be way markers. So I'll, sort of, I'll head towards that one, but I'm not sure there's much point. Coming up to the top of Red Crag now. Can't really see the crag, but anyway. This must be the crag. There we go. Here's Red Crag in all its redness. Riverdale back down there and I'm now heading up there to uh, Crookdale, Crookdale Pike and it's just started to uh, rain a little bit so anyway. Okay I've been getting a bit peckish so I thought while I've got the shelter of this wall and before I uh, go up there where it might be a bit more exposed. I thought I'd sit down, hunker down behind this wall, and have a bit of lunch. And uh, it's it's stopped it's stopped raining now, but um, yeah, we'll see what the weather does later on. Okay, I've had had my lunch and I've set off for Crookdale Crookdale Pike over there. Um, I've, I'm keeping I'm keeping a jacket and a coat on for now, just because I got got slightly slightly chilly while I was sat down for lunch and I think the temperature has actually dropped as well when it started started raining so uh, we'll see I may have to take them take them off when I start going uphill anyway. This is the top of Crookdale Crag. And, uh, there's Crookdale over there. Um, so yeah, nice spot. I'm just uh, continuing on now. So I was looking at the map, wondering what this high point on the right is. 
and that's at 485 metres, which is uh, taller than the other than the other tops on this walk. Uh, but it doesn't it doesn't have a name, so it's a it's an unnamed top. Um, but yeah, so I'm just going to be kind of walking past it. I suppose I might take a little detour to it actually if I can get through a gate, a gate or something through the wall. Um, but anyway, once we've passed, once we've passed that, um, I'll just continue up, continue along the ridge, uh, cross over Breast High Road, uh, which is a byway, and then after that onto Winash, which is a, a named top. I'm just to the east of uh, unnamed 485 because uh, unfortunately I couldn't find a way through a way through the wall that would I didn't think would damage the wall. There was a gate at the bottom of this field which I hopped over. So I'm nearly I'm nearly there so I get the sense get the sense of what it's like. Uh, yeah. It's nice. So this is this is Borrowdale. Anyway, I'm gonna head back and head back to join my route now. Anyway. The wall the wall has been broken down in a few places, but there's fences with barbed wire and whatnot. I didn't feel like I could get through without potentially knocking more of the wall down or catching myself on barbed wire, so I, I will leave that for another day. This byway that I'm coming up on is Breast High Road. Down to the left we've got Breverdale and on the right is Borrowdale. Borrowdale is down that way. I've noticed quite a few uh, hoof, hoof marks. I can't, I can't tell. I think, I think they are, I think they're horses with shoes on, based on the shape. I've just come from over here and I'm on Denison Hill at the moment. And I thought there was a nice view. Over here is Borrowdale. This is Abbeystead Fell. Over there is Castle Fell. And then there's Grey Rig Forest. I'm now continuing on towards Winash. The ground along this ridge is not actually too bad. I was wondering if it'd be very wet and boggy after the, uh, the wet section earlier but it is, is actually mostly not too bad here. As I was walking along, I was also thinking how uh, the only person I'd actually passed or spoken to all day was the lady I spoke to about her dog near the start of the walk. Although, of course, it can be nice meeting other people on the hills and saying hello, there is also something very nice about feeling like you've got the whole place to yourself. OK, I'm on top of Winash now. And uh, although although I can't see very far down into Borrowdale or Breverdale because uh, it's a, a shallow slope, I do probably have a, one of the best views of all the way around that I'm going to get today. Um, so kind of further down the ridge where I'm going is Winterclough Hill, um, and then those hills over there are the Howgill Fells. And um, we've got the M6 running down there. Um, you can see a little bit of Breverdale where it came up through. And there is a Shap Quarry. And this is where I came from along this ridge. And then over, over there, you kind of, that valley, that valley there is kind of the second half of Borrowdale. And then over in that direction is uh, 
Sled, Sleddale Fell. Um, and there's, there's the start of Bannisdale over there. And then, as I pointed out before, Abbeystead Fed. But yeah, lovely view all the way around. Well, that explains where the hoof prints came from earlier. Okay, so I'm currently just making my way towards Winterclough, which is a Okay, I've, I've come down from over there and I'm now on top of Castafell Hill. And where I'm heading next is Geoffrey Mount over there. Okay, I'm nearing Jeffrey Mount now, and we've got a uh, quite a nice view down the I think it's the Eden Valley, the M6, and also the West Coast Mainline down there. At this point, I decide to head southeast from the top of Jeffreys Mount to get a better view down into the Eden Valley and the motorway. If I was going to go straight back to the car, I'd go in this direction towards the rainbow. Okay, here we go. This is perfect. This is the view that I was hoping to get. So. Okay, well, I've got the uh, I've got the view I was hoping for, so it's time just to uh, get back down the hill. Now I'm going to be I'm going to be careful getting back because this is quite a steep grassy slope, and grass can be slippery when it's damp. It's not it's not really too slippery at the moment, but I'm just going to try and choose a uh, try and choose a safe line. So I'm going to avoid going any further down because it gets quite steep. I think I'm probably going to head to roughly where I came, where I came across, sort of this way. Actually, there's a little track there. I might as well, uh, I might as well follow that. This is where it goes.
So we've uh, <laughs> we've got away from the, the steep bits of uh, Jeffrey Mount now. So I'm just heading across the uh, the fell side towards uh, the corner of the field near Roundfoot, uh, where I'll join the footpath. Now I think the car is literally just sort of the other side of this field. So I could probably cut through that gate and I'll probably be one at the bottom of the field as well. Um, and I guess if I was if I was desperate to get back and uh, it was getting late, I might consider doing that. But um, given I'm not, and uh, it's a nice walk, I'm going to go go the proper way around. So yeah, this this track isn't on any of the maps, by the way. Um, it's, it's just it's just appeared in a convenient location for me and it seems to be going in the right direction so I'm, uh, I'm following it now I've now joined an even better track looks like an ATV track so anyway this is this is round weight down there according to the map there is a round weight abbey I don't know if that's just a farmhouse name or they used to be a very small abbey or something because I can't see I can't see anything that looked like the ruins of an abbey but anyway something to look up when I get home maybe okay this is where I came down and we've now joined on to this bridleway which will take me down on past round fight and down to the road so nearly nearly finished now Okay, so now back to the road which I walked down this morning. Um, but rather than going directly back up the road, I'm going to uh, try and find the uh, path which goes down here. Because it goes, I think it drops down to the uh, river and goes through some of the trees, and I thought it might be nice. But it's nice that someone's come along and mowed, mowed all of the uh, bracken and undergrowth back. Better kept than many paths you come across. There's a couple of, couple of benches here. Roger Blinkenship, fly fisher. So I'm not exactly sure where the path comes up here. I'm not sure it's here. I sort of thought it's an interesting looking path. Yes. Oh okay, I think it does come up. It does come up here. I didn't think we'd go right next to the motorway like this. Okay, so I'm back in back in the car, all uh, changed into clean sh shoes and whatnot, and yeah, so so I think 
I had a really nice walk today. It was a brilliant route. I didn't see another walker or runner or any, anyone like that all day. The only person I really saw was the uh, the lady lady at one of the farms who had the dog, which is so yeah, that's that's lovely. Um, yeah, got some got some nice views. The weather was pretty good. Um, all in all, really good day. So so yeah, all that's left now is the uh, the drive back home. Although before I head south along the motorway, I think I'm going to head north. And there's there's a little road which sort of crisscrosses between the uh, kind of goes under the motorway lanes just to the north of T-Bay and I've always wanted to drive along that so I think I'm going to go and do that today and then head off head off south Overall, despite some boggy sections and a touch of rain, I really enjoyed this walk and would happily do the same route again in future. Highlights for me were the Valley of Breverdale itself, with its many interesting old buildings and other features, and the view from the side of Jeffrey's Mount down into the Loon Valley, and also the general feeling of remoteness you get being somewhere relatively untrafficked. Thanks for watching, see you next time.